From Turning Stone Resort in upstate New York, this is Poker Night in America. This is Poker Night in America. I'm Chris Hansen, happy to be next to Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. It's our last day here at Turning Stone and just when I was starting to learn everybody's names. But we saved the best for last from John and Alex and Shane. What do you mean, Joe, Alec, and Sean? Yes. Here's what everyone is in for as we continue day two at Turning Stone. Kind of surprised to see this many people in Profitville. Uh, and also the biggest surprise is one of the best players at the table, Sean Deeb, he's down almost 20,000. You have that many winners, somebody's got to fund the losing. And so far, Richard Anthony and Sean Deeb have done that. Once or twice. Yeah, it's, the game's just so big. Yeah, it's so big. And you just have to get deep so fast. Like. That's really tough. They were playing the double draw for a while, the pot limit. Alex Trelli with double aces. Double. aces. No, I never played. Makes it I 300. Play like twice, okay. but I just remember it was like really action, really Oh, fun. yeah. Positions everything in that game, right? Yeah. Careful, man. Well, you can play like half, half pot limit, too, right? Half pot half limit. Half pot limit's not that good. Anthony calls with King Town. Kind of runs the river play a lot. Two combatants to go against to Alec Trelli's aces. The Daisy. And McKeon's flopped pretty it's dang nice good here. Home, Flush yeah. draw and a straight draw. Yeah, they played Potlum with Daisy. Very interesting game. Trelli's going to want to bet this pretty hard. It's a draw heavy board. You can get lots of action, lots of stuff to protect games, against. Like, it was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, because. I mean, but at least a split pot game, That's right? 750 so into a pot of 975. 750. Going heads up to the turn. Board pairs. And that's a pretty good card for Alec Torelli. No draws came in. He should be able to bet this again for value. I think Joe would call him the flop with any it. pair, but he's not going to have too many fives. You see, this bet's a little bit smaller relative to the size of the pot. Joe McKeon, he's really impressive. You know, to look at the guy, you want to be a hater. You want to say, oh, you luck box your way to the final table. You luck box your way to the win. I think the kid knows what he's doing. And it's interesting to look at him. Obviously, this was filmed before the World Series with the exact same look that he had throughout that final table. Yep, kid just played his game and took home the bracelet, makes his flush on the <laughs> river. <laughs> Mike, give him one of your balls. Looks hungry. I just drooled in it. I don't think he wants it. <laughs> Rep stuck. Lost 3,000 straight when I sat down, but I doubled up slowly since then. 3,600, the bet from Torelli. 36. Not exactly the small bet I was expecting, but I guarantee you whatever Alex's doing is right. Aces. Gets just a call from McKeon, doesn't get raised, and McKeon's going to ship the whole pot. And look at the excitement on the young man's face. <laughs> That's what I like about him, is that he is just always at zero. So pure, All this gloating and celebrating, so it's really disgusting. Effort. Such a pure living, pure life. It was a really fun ride, it was very long and grueling, but I ran, I ran really good at the end, so I just have a lot of chips and I'm ready to go. I'm waiting every day for November. November 11th? <laughs> November 11th will be after I win the tournament that you're not gonna win. Uh, ooh, bold prediction. Turns out he was right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I made even more my range is still pretty wide there, but every once in a while, I gotta have I'm a gonna top I'm going to get action. have it, yeah. Every once in a while. <laughs> It'll be that once in a while. <laughs> that is what you're rooting for. Here you go. You can play them if you want. Three bills. Who, who raised the three? Mikey did. It's not me, don't worry. <laughs> oh. Thousand. And nobody can see each other's cards now. It's a little different. You can put money chi in the middle. I don't know. Mikey can probably turn them over if he feels like it. We got ace king versus tens versus sixes versus queen jab. We got four very playable hands. You guys want to put on the last person pull test to show game after this hand? Oh, yeah. I forgot that. I would have done that the whole time. Yes, yeah, fine with Everyone me. Everyone agrees after the hand. 
Unless it's like pre-flop in the big blind or something. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's so, even if, what's it matter? Yeah, yeah, it just slows down. Like, yeah, whatever. I forgot to call this in. Hold on. I wanted to play. Oh, now I'm happier I folded. it. Bart <laughs> is handcuffed yet again. And Richard Anthony, look on his face, says it all, thinking, this has been me all day. Putting money into the pot and having to fold. Now, Mike Dentali is probably not loving the fact that he's looking at oh, calling $12,550, but this is kind of what you want. <laughs> right away, it would be Mikey this hand. I wish we did a one-hand earlier. <laughs> I know, it would have been so much. <laughs> so you right. want Deeb to blast off, and you want to be able to call him with a very strong hand. Deeb could certainly be doing this with worse than Ace King. Once or twice. So Dentali makes the call. They're racing, oh, yeah. like Xbox versus PlayStation. One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Oh, he flipped his hand. Hey, hey. I take 400 on the ace kick. You gotta run it twice, twice, though. Twice. You gotta win both forwards to scoop the pot. Ten's looking pretty good on this first flop. <laughs> <laughs> Deep's just gotta fade. An ace or a king on the river. There's no f***ing way I'm winning the second one. <laughs> I think there's a chance. So Dentali needs to have his ace king down. come in on the second oh, board here. Ace king's more likely to win this. The chop. And as they say, Sean, Deep now is free rolling <laughs> the second board. There's an ace on the flop. Deep needs a 10 on the Turner River. Oh, there's a king and a jack in there. All right, there. There's a 10 of hearts in there. And it doesn't happen. And so they're going to chop it up. That's a chop. All right, so we're on for the... Yeah, is everyone down with that? You too, Mikey? What? The last person in the hand has to full face up. The guy who concedes the pot, not the winner. Are you good with that, bud? Yeah, absolutely. You're in with that? We're going to take a quick break here on Poker Night in America. If you're not back, by the time the last card hits the button, we will fold your hand. For more from Poker Night, visit PokerNight.com or find us on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, where you can see complete episodes and unedited live streams. Welcome back to Poker Night in America from upstate New York. You know, I grew up 90 minutes from here. My mom's going to cook everyone dinner. Poker Night in America, at Turning Stone Resort, Verona, New York. He's Stapes. I'm the guy without the cool nickname, Chris. The Hans. I just don't think that's going to stick. I thought about trying to. I mean, we can put it out there, but I just don't think it's going to stick. My entire career is based on making things stick that shouldn't. Kings for Alec Torelli. Like, for instance, I'm trying to make Lady Queens stick as a nickname for kings. I mean, man queens. See, I can't even get my own thing right. Yeah, I'm such a shit going all in here. If it's not for me, but, but if it's for him, put it there. It's for you, too. We're no, I'm OK. You want one? See, this is why I should have went on there. Dude, this is just, this seat has just got to be the worst seat in the history of seats. And Sean Deeb is three batting with two tens. Seriously. That's me on steroids when I'm playing 510. Mike, can you complain here with me a little bit here? Oh, never mind. You're up, so you don't, you don't complain. You're eating balls and you're up. Excuse me? Meatballs. There's a catering table just off set. Just tap it in. And the players are getting up to go and fetch. <laughs> I see. I you were that makes way more sense. Like, like, ah, oh, because you would have. If everyone folded, I was going to fold too. <laughs> 3250? My cards, Steve, would have got to see my cards. <laughs> I might have been slightly out of line. I apologize. So. Oh. Is that a call? <laughs> oh, boy, I knew there was no way he was folding. I didn't know he was going to get it in. It's Domination what do you Nation. Do? Uh, twice fine. We're going to run it twice. Uh, there has been at least one 10 folded. Oh, not spade that second, not spade. Two turns out. Oh, that was me. Two hearts? No. He does not. Be pretty <laughs> tough for Sean Deeb when he needs a jack. The first of oh, two boards. Don't you agree, Steve, when you win the first one? Look what I got you. Yeah, I guess. When he says the 10 hearts is dead, I don't like my oh, chance on the what second I got you, man. <laughs> no, I didn't you say it. Hungry, man, and I oh, this is going to be a tough one for 10s to win. You know, he is drawing you dead. Favor, you know. Oh, Sean Deeb. <laughs> I appreciate you looking out for It's not me. going it's well. Like no, he was stuck 17K <laughs> coming into play. He just lost another 15. 
Yikes. Hey, San Alex. That's okay. okay. There's a more lucky spot. Got fed. You got some two balls. There's a lot more that goes into the hand than simply the specific cards you have. A lot of it is about the situation as well. And in this spot, I don't think you can blame Sean for going broke here. I could easily be raising with a lot of hands, and so that makes him more prone to going all in to defend against the times on bluffing. And so I don't blame him at all for going in with two tens. It was really unfortunate that I had two kings, and sometimes you find yourself in a good situation where you capitalize. It seems like some people didn't play like poker in between. Most of them like didn't want to coach. They're just like, oh, I play my game. Like that's what. No offense to you, Tom. It's just like that's a dumb insane. thing to do. Insane. What? Oh, I was just kidding. Oh, okay. I, was just, I was clearly <laughs> kidding. I don't know. Four I think that's. I have. Insane. I have. Yeah. He told me yesterday he's going out to Vegas like three weeks earlier to work with them, like one on okay. one, which is. But I mean, a Roger lot more than I'm doing as of right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's the best. We are running out of daylight here at Turning Stone tonight. And so if you see maybe people loosening up, that might be wise. The game's going to be coming to end fairly soon. That's sort of the beauty about poker, though. Poker's like the one game where people oh, won't actually do that. <laughs> Whereas in other, other sports, I think everybody, it's like so normal for people to, well, have, they to take, such a young to age, take that like approach. They're, they're, they're coached oh, yeah, before to, they're the best. They to be more up. humble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas in poker, it's like... No straddle, it's small. I think, though, there's ace king for McKeon, to not ace jack for Torelli. Fundamentally, completely altering your game and well, that's ending like, up in positions where you're just not comfortable playing. Well, that's why people well, like, oh, hire Steve. This like, I think is Steve is the best tournament player, but ugly. he's got a difficult style to adapt to, so he's not probably the best for that situation because you're going to be uncomfortable in all these situations that he will make correct decisions you might not also make. Not right, now, you put Sean. Yourself in spots where you're not used to being. You should find a coach who has a similar style to you, however it is. And then, and, and then you, you can work, yeah, work through or that. Or just, you know, like get more help understanding some of the intricacies. Yeah. Or different parts of the game that you don't necessarily understand. You should have your math people. coach and your, like, play coach. It's totally different. I mean, like, I watched New House play no. last year. And there were a couple singing. spots where, like, the New House I knew would have bet in spots and put the other guy in really tough situations. 900 the bet from McKeon. And, like, Four players from, thinking, ah, oh, I'm you know, trapping the others. Watch this. That yeah. Past, he would have like made that. I'm just afraid it's gonna be a boring river and card, and we're gonna chop medium this. Medium weak, and they're medium, and he loses a bunch of pots in a row. And, and that, that's the limit background, <laughs> getting that thin value over hand. Right, but that's one of his huge strengths, right? He puts the heat on those people. Both of them seem to be a little cautious you know, as like we head to the river. He's a player who gets a lot of value from putting pressure on opponents and making them guess, and then you take that away. All right, well, it's no chop. It's a nice damn mistake. It's whatever, you know. At least that's how it looked from the outside. I but if people don't know he adjusted that style, then it works out really well. Because then they think his range is a lot wider than it actually is. Maybe. I don't know. I think people end up in situations where they're not comfortable too often when they try to change their game. McKeon best 2100. I think I just call here a lot. I imagine when I raise, it's hard to get paid by a worse hand. I am going broke every single time here with Ace Jack. They could just keep putting out additional cards after the river, and I'd go broke each and every time. This is a spot where a lot of people go broke, and they go, what do you expect? I had three aces. I wasn't going to go broke. And the best players in the world. No. Whoa, no, he doesn't even oh, so call. They're stopping. Yeah. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what a lay down. We talked about some of the big hands that I folded during the play here on Poker Night in America. And to a casual viewer, it might seem crazy or really, really difficult to fold those hands. But when you take into account the size of the game you're playing and the stakes and your opponents, a much more prudent question to ask yourself, instead of focusing on your own situation, be asking yourself, what does my opponent think about here, me here? What does my opponent think about me in this situation? What are they trying to accomplish? And are they really going to bluff me here? So I always try and literally envision myself in my opponent's shoes and how I would play the hand strategically if I was them. I said I thought Phil was the second best player of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime anybody mentions that hand, it's the block. It doesn't matter if they preface it with saying that they love me. Goodbye, goodbye. Welcome back to Poker Night in America, Turningstone Resort. Back to the No Limit Cash Game. Running out of time for the night, just time for a couple more hands. Sean Deeb is stuck large at this game. Let's see if he can get himself out of some of this debt. He was betting big out of the gate, and they just put a cap on it right away. Like, so see how it's possible, dude. You considered putting 1100 in there. I saw you thinking about it. Me? 
No one's it's raising? It takes longer to call. Wow. Remember who got you the meatballs? Is this real life? <laughs> so Deeb's flopped the set. I think everybody's gonna be in a lot of trouble if there's another diamond on the turn. Kian may be in a bit of trouble as well. He may think his jacks are good with only one overcard out there. Porter's betting is up and down draw. I'm getting cracked. I ain't gonna wanna buy no dinner. And by the time this gets back around to Sean Deeb now, <laughs> I'm guessing there's probably a raise in his future. This is a pretty loose call from Tom Canule. I wonder if he does this if we're not coming down the home stretch. Calling with middle pair there. When there's that many players act behind, I, I just don't think it's going to be good very often. And your chances of improving are also not very good. If you want to be a poker commentator, little note, uh, whenever Sean Deeb has action, just say he's going to raise. It'll make you look right, like, almost every time. It helps that he hits a lot of sets. I mean, I think this is a perfect spot for a just call from Rep Porter. Correct, sir. Canuli out of the way. Now heads up with Deeb and Porter. He's a dealer in Vegas. Uh -oh. Porter looking for either the three or the eight, or maybe a diamond uh -oh. to pick up some more draws, and boom goes the dynamite. And Chris Hansen is looking for a time machine so he can make that joke. I'm not going to lie, I've done it all the same. I shouldn't throw stones. Porter does not have the nuts on this board. Yeah, there is a little hesitation here because that three was a club. It's a big match, huh? There is that possibility he made the flush on the turn, but he didn't. However, for Sean Deeb, not drawing dead. Once, twice. Twice was always fine with me. I got set. I got straight. They're going to run it twice, okay. as is the custom here in Turning Stone. That five's not going to do it. Deeb needs the board to pair to find a seven. Wow, he manages to find a four on the river in the second run out, so they're going to chop nice it up. Nice they're going to win 800 bucks each. I mean, it sure beats losing 10K. That's what I had in the other hand, too. And you had the three. Yeah. Straddle from Joe McKeon. I mean, everybody just. All well, Deeb's getting cards to try to get himself out of the hole he's dug for himself. He's got Ace King on this hand. Stack there if it comes out of her. Yeah. Richard Anthony can't help himself. Well, he's got a hole he's got to climb out of, too. Maybe being to the left of Sean Deeb has caused him to also lose a lot of money in this game. I mean, I was going to say that Bart Hansen, you know, is sitting to the left of Sean Deeb, and you're supposed to be in a position of power there, and just time and time again, Deeb just, like, all in, thereby taking away all of the power from the person sitting to his left. Somehow Sean Deeb manages to dominate from the right. I've never seen anything like it. To Seattle? For a week. Canoodle raises the 1600. Yeah, been, but, uh, yeah, no, and so now we're back to deep. Sometimes I dream to hear me like Joe. Like to be like Joe. Like sweatpants. Like to be like sweatpants. Are you wearing Jordans? Yeah. Yeah. So. Of course. That's all black guys wear. All black people. It won't. It won't. And Again, kids, like, if you want to be a poker commentator no when action is on Sean Deeb, I mean, just I say, I think he's going to raise. And look at that. You'd be right yet How again. How much did you start with? 16. Kids, if you want to be a poker commentator, please quit because Chris and I really can't handle any more competition. I've got four kids. You have different bright shirts, too. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. A little over 12 behind. So I was wearing a white one yesterday. I, got a lot of no, I was wearing a black one yesterday, a white one the day before. And this is going to be really hard for Canuli to get away from. Deep is so volatile. He could be doing this with anything. I like taking a flop in position. It looks like that is what Tom is electing to do. Actually, not PLO tournament video. Not PLO high. We got 9,000 in the middle pre flop. Uh, so this is the problem with flatting with King Queen is that this happens a lot. No the pair, the, one of your more coaching, suit. The more coaching Somebody the continuation you bets and there you sit. That I do believe. Sean is yeah, most certainly continuation. I probably read more poker books than Everybody most people. Knows something you do. What about Bob Chiffon? <laughs> Seriously, you would make it so difficult. Rep, what about yeah, yeah, Bob he, Chiffon middle limit? makes a really like a, small like a continuation bet. I read his. Which is pretty I read his Omaha eight books. <laughs> gonna <laughs> pop. That's this big pre-flop. Bet of 2600 is gonna accomplish the same thing as a bet of four or five thousand. Poker. It's not about being better at playing poker. Canoodly thinking this over. Yeah. That's a great And there is absolutely nothing there for him. But it doesn't look like, like that, that is going to stop him. Sean's giving him a pretty good price to peel. <laughs> it was a great book. 
Yes. It's funny that because yes, I was at his table. Burn and turn. Like the and that is <laughs> just a really <laughs> horrific card from Tom Cannuli. You hit the wrong one. <laughs> on. I remember this. Deeb's all in. It's 10, right? How can Cannuli uh, not call? Longer. You Trying call to trying to hit a king or a queen. And then you hit it. Yeah, you have to call, right? I call. Ace king. Ace king. King, queen. King, queen. King, queen? Uh, once or twice. I'll leave it up to you. Twice. Twice. And then you can uh, ask those guys over there. That's good. There's another paint card for the sweat. They are running it twice. I gave you it's double really unlikely that's Cannuli to win either one of these. Yep. So Sean Deeb is going to double up right at the end of this session. 10. 95. 90. 90. Please don't go anywhere. There's nothing better else on TV. There's more Poker Night in America when we return. Closed captioning is brought to you as a public service by Poker Night in America. Well, that is it for day two here at Turning Stone. That last hand stops some of the bleeding for Sean D, but there's a couple other wounds that are still oozing blood. He will be licking those for a little while. Let's turn our attention to the happy news. Who's a winner tonight? Unbelievable. Matt Glantz somehow made $50 tonight. I hope he doesn't spend it all in one place. And it's Alec Torelli who's the big winner, and it should be no surprise because he absolutely owned everyone. I guess we'll see you next time from the Seminole Hard Rock. For more Poker Night, in the meantime, go to PokerNight.com for complete episodes and unedited live streams. For Joe Stapleton and Chris Hansen, see you next time right here on Poker Night in America. That was for the dealer, the $50. What's that? The $50 you just added to your stack. <laughs> You just stole from the dealer, yes. I the, took $50? Yes. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was like, wait, you took the deal. Uh.